Good morning. My name is uh, Giovanni Gerdovic. I work at SUSE in the performance team. Um, this is my third year I present at Linux Days. I'm very happy to be here, but I haven't learned Czech yet, so the presentation is going to be in English. Uh, the topic of the presentation is the Schedule Chill Frequency uh, Governor, and uh, this is the agenda for the talk. I will give a brief introduction on what this Schedule Chill thing is, then uh, uh, present this topic uh, of frequency scale invariance, which is uh, often discussed in development mailing list, but it has not received wider coverage, such as in Linux Weekly News. Uh, it has not been covered with a uh, divulgative article. So I, I would like to, to introduce the audience to this uh, concept and then uh, recall what the PELT mechanism is. PELT stands for Per Entity Load Tracking and it's, the, it's a feature of the Linux scheduler. Uh, it's an, it was uh, invented in 2012, and it's um, an improved way to gauge the activity of a system. And then describe utilast, which is, uh, stands for utilization estimation, and it is an optimization to the PELT signal uh, in order to better serve the schedule till frequency governor. Lots of names, so um, I would like to uh, tell you that you can interrupt me anytime if you have a remark, a question. There is a mic you can grab, but also if this is too much of a burden, I can also repeat the question so it's recorded. Just make a sign if, and, and interrupt me for any question or remarks. Um, a bit of terminology because before we start. Uh, I will often uh, mention uh, frequency scaling governors and frequency scaling drivers. A governor is the algorithm, the piece of code that takes uh, some data in input and uh, uh, decides uh, what frequency should we run next. So the governor is uh, an algorithm. And the driver is the piece of software that communicates the uh, output of the governor to the hardware. So those two uh, pieces of code work together. An example of governor is uh, uh, on demand or uh, power save or performance, which is the governor, a trivial governor that always runs to the max frequency that your CPU allows. And examples of driver are, for example, ACPI CPU frac or Intel P state. Those are, those are drivers. And you can use those commands to, uh, to know what is running at the moment on, uh, on your laptop. CPU power is a tool that, uh, whose source code is inside the Linux kernel source tree, but is, uh, is packaged in most distribution as a separate tool, so you can download it if you don't already have it. And with this subcommand frequency info, you can ask for the, uh, in the first, uh, the first uh, command flag dash dash driver, which is the driver you're running on, uh, running at the moment. It's going to be probably uh, Intel P state if you are on Intel uh, CPU or ACPI CPU frac. Uh, the dash dash policy will tell you what governor is avail is running uh, at the moment on your uh, on your machine. And uh, the last one, dash dash governors with an S, plural, is going to tell you which governors are available on your system because uh, you can change governor, you can change the algorithm uh, while the system is running. It's a simple command, uh, you have to run it as root, but that changed the algorithms. The algorithms. Uh, as, as opposed to uh, the governor, the driver cannot be changed while the system is running, you have to reboot, uh, and or, or maybe not, I'm not sure. I'm not... Uh, betting on that one. Anyway, these are the comments to uh, inter in interrogate your, uh, your, your system. And uh, schedule chill, what is it? Um, sorry, just a sip of water. Um, schedule chill is a generic frequency uh, scaling governor. Generic means that it can run with multiple drivers. There are several other generic governors. It, um, it, uh, it uses as an input. I told you before that a governor takes some data in input uh, about what the system is currently doing. And 
based upon this data, decides which frequency we should run next. Roughly speaking, if the system is uh, uh, working a lot, we have to speed up, increase the, the, the clock, and, and this is what the governor roughly does. And this data that Schedule Chill uses comes from the scheduler. This is what set Schedule Chill uh, apart from, from the other schedule till scheduler utilization. So this is the data came from, come from, uh, from the scheduler. And uh, this utilization signal that the governor uses comes from the scheduler is um, calculated uh, on a per task basis as opposed to uh, being calculated on a per CPU basis. Uh, so the granularity is much more um, fine and uh, allows you to solve uh, the problem of, uh, of task migration. If all you know, if your uh, finer degree of granularity is uh, the CPU uh, and you don't know what is uh, uh, creating the utilization you see, when a task, uh, a task meaning the kernel representation of a thread is moved, a uh, user space thread is moved from a CPU to another, you, um, the, the, the CPU that is receiving this new task will just uh, need some time to uh, uh, gather data util uh, utilization data to realize that something has changed, that there is some new actors that is creating uh, more, uh, that is busy on that CPU. On the other side, if, you're, uh, if you start calculating your utilization on a per task basis and then aggregate it up over the hierarchy uh, arriving at the, at the root of the hierarchy, which is the CPU, you can know uh, from the scheduler uh, that a task has been moved, so immediately migrate this utilization data to the new CPU. So you don't have to, that small lag of time uh, that is necessary to, to real, you don't, you don't need to, to wait because you already migrate this, uh, this number to the other CPU, so immediately you know uh, and you can react uh, more promptly. And this is uh, in, op in opposition to what uh, Intel P State does, which uh, gathers data directly from, uh, from the CPU, from uh, hardware registers, and it doesn't know anything about schedule, um, about tasks, about migration, it doesn't know that a task even exists. It only knows what the CPU has done in the past. Um, and now let's talk about uh, uh, frequency uh, scale invariance, uh, which uh, is, uh, I will spend quite a few minutes talking about this. Let's see what it, the problem is. The problem is not very complicated. It's uh, that if the CPU is running uh, slower, uh, your task will appear uh, bigger. And this happens because the utilization that I am going to define later is uh, calculated as a function of uh, the running time of a task. So. The, ta the time that a task has been on the CPU co co executing instructions. So if your CPU is able to, uh, is uh, running faster, the time that a task, uh, that the time that it takes to a task to accomplish its work is smaller. And uh, since this uh, is the basis for the utilization function, the utilization number also looks smaller. And, um, the way to solve this uh, problem is to multiply your utilization number uh, by a scaling factor, which is uh, the ratio current frequency divided by max frequency. So you basically normalize the utilization number, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's not as simple on all the platform to do this uh, this normalization, but this is the, the basic problem. If a task, if the CPU run faster, the task, the task looks smaller and, and vice versa. Um, um, I'd like to, um, to take a step back and uh, in order to, to describe uh, a little better this uh, scale invariance, frequency scale invariance problem, to, to, to reflect on what utilization and also load are. Uh, they have, um, they, they are two uh, quantity, they are calculated by the operating system, but uh, they are not some physical quantity that are defined by nature, such as length or uh, pressure or volume. They are uh, just cost functions. And we are free to be creative and define them as 
better uh, fits our needs, what we want to model the activity of the system. So we invent some formulas to co com compute this number that we call utilization. And so it's, um, they are arbitrarily defi defined, so to speak. There are some requirements, some obvious requirements that you would uh, uh, ask for doing this modeling. And one requirement is that utilization should be, I expect it to be dimensionless, uh, so no, you, no f physical uh, quantity attached to it, it's just a number. That uh, utilization, I expect it to be between zero and one. So uh, CPU having a utilization of zero will be uh, empty, and a, C a CPU having a utilization of one should be completely full. And also, as we uh, are discussing schedule till, we also require our utilization to be, uh, to be defined uh, per task and then aggregated up as the tasks are grouped into C group and then into run queues and finally into CPU. Um, so for, uh, just for the following few slides, let's not think about the, the co complete formula for the utilization that I'm going to show you a bit later, but let's take a very, very dumb and simple utilization uh, formula. Uh, as I said, the, the, the core of the problem is that the utilization is uh, a function of the running time of a task. So the time that the task spent on a CPU. So let's just take that. Let's just take that the utilization of a task is, it's a number associated to this task, and it's uh, the percentage of running time during the last millisecond. So we take the last millisecond of time, we measure how long, uh, for, how me, for, how, for, for how much time during this millisecond the, uh, the, the task was uh, on the CPU running instructions, and this percentage is going to be the utilization of, of my task. And there is a problem, which is the frequency scale invariance problem, which is if the CPU is running faster, the utilization looks smaller, and vice versa. And this is a, a flaw in the, in the definition of utilization. It makes the utilization number so calculated completely useless. Because if we just change the frequency of the CPU, our tasks are, are, have a different utilization. We cannot compare a, a utilization uh, calculated uh, five minutes ago with a utilization calculated now, because the frequency were different. And uh, as we understand, the, the, the utilization value depends completely on the frequency. Uh, how do we solve this problem? I anticipated it before. We take the utilization and we multiply by scaling factor. Scaling factor is current frequency divided max frequency. So uh, we remove this dependency on the, on, the, on the frequency. The utilization we define is still quite useless and stupid, as, I, as we saw the, the percentage of running time during the last millisecond, but it's still at, at least at least this hill definedness is uh, removed and um, the, the utilization is now frequency invariant. This uh, uh, approach has been actually utilized for the ARM uh, platform and uh, in uh, January 2018, six months ago, uh, this uh, uh, way of computing uh, a scale invariant uh, utilization has been merged into Linux for the ARM uh, architecture. But uh, on x86, we have uh, another problem because uh, in this ratio, we require the maximum frequency for this calculation. And the maximum frequency on x86 is not a fixed quantity. It's something that changes over time because of the uh, turbo mechanism. Turbo mechanism is um, a way of uh, uh, giving uh, some more uh, frequency to a core if we are within a given global power, uh, power budget. The power budget is uh, um, allotted by package, so by socket. Uh, a socket um, is the, can have several cores. This is the thing that you take out of the, of the box and plug into your motherboard. This looks like uh, something like this. this. is the CPU, uh, the Intel processor that you buy at the store, and it can have 16 or 32 or whatever number of cores inside. And this uh, power budget is for the entire package. If the cores around you are quiet, they're not doing uh, a lot of work, then you have a few watts that you can uh, use to speed up 
one specific core that is very busy. And uh, in, if you have those watts available, your, uh, the turbo states are available and you can have this higher max frequency. But if the core around you are, uh, are busy as well as you are, you don't have this uh, uh, frequency in excess. So this maximum frequency for you is lower. So this is a problem that uh, arises if you want to apply the same strategy in correcting for frequency invariance for the x86 platform. There is a patch to uh, overcome this difficulty uh, written by Peter Zistra, the scheduler maintainer. This patch has been published on the Linux kernel mailing list but hasn't been merged yet. And uh, the way it, uh, it, uh, it solved the problem is that it tries to um, to dynamically compute what is the maximum frequency available at this time right now. And the way it does it uses, uh, it reads the, the, the A-perf and M-perf uh, uh, hardware registers that uh, tells you uh, what is the actual frequency you are running uh, uh, at the moment. And uh, the actually the average, uh, the A-perf stands for average performance. Uh, and MPERF stands for maximum performance. So MPERF is, uh, is just a counter that uh, spins at the maximum non-turbo uh, frequency you have. So it's just a counter that spins at a constant uh, speed, let's say. And the average performance is, a, is another counter that spins at the actual frequency you're going. So if you take MPERF slash, uh, uh, if, if you take the those two, uh, the, count, the values of those two counters to compute the ratio. You can know if you uh, are going, if, if this ratio is above one, it means that you're running at, uh, in a turbo state because A perf is larger than M perf. And uh, so you can know uh, if you have those extra state available or not uh, in, during the, 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 near, uh, the near past. So this is what the patch does. It, it tries to dynamically uh, discover if this, uh, what is the maximum frequency that we uh, are, have available in this uh, moment in time. But this patch has not been merged yet, so we have to live with, without it for the moment. Um, and um, so this, uh, this is what the, the, um, the frequency scale invariance problem is, and uh, schedule chill is uh, um, it, it uh, takes the this utilization number, which for now we have assumed to be this very stupid function, uh, percentage of running time during the last millisecond. It's not true. Uh, it, the, the number comes from the Pelt formula, which is a bit complex, and uh, the risk is to distract us from the core of the problem. So that's why I try to use this. A simplistic uh, utilization function. So schedule chill takes this utilization number and has to compute the next frequency. How does it do it? It uses two different formulas, depending uh, if uh, it can, it, it detects if the architecture we're running uh, on has a frequency invariant uh, utilization or not. And it uses a different formula in, in the two cases. Well, different formulas. You can see that on the top, I wrote the formula for frequency invariant case, and on the bottom, I wrote the other formula for the non-frequency invariant case. Those two formulas look very, very similar. And uh, the only difference is that, do I have a pointer? I'm not sure. Oh, yes. The only frequency is that this term, difference is that this term uh, here is frequency, the maximum frequency, and then in the non-frequency invariant case, it's the current frequency. So the, the subscript is different. Uh, uh, superficially, this is the only difference. And it's a bit bizarre because those two cases are fundamentally different and the formulas are almost the same. So why is that? Um, let's try to see if there is some symmetry, if we can gather some intuition over those two formulas. This is the, uh, uh, the frequency invariant case. And what's the rationale behind it? We uh, want the next frequency to be proportional to the utilization. So that makes sense. And then we have this 1.25 number, which uh, looks a bit magical. Why is it there? The reason is that uh, 1.25 multiplied by 0 0.8 makes 1. So when utilization is 0 0.8 or above, this, uh, the, the, the next frequency is equal to the max frequency. This is a design choice, 
and uh, it means that if we have a utilization of 80% or above, we consider our system to be uh, under quite some load and we want to speed up the frequency as much as possible. So this is why the 125 is there. Utilization, 80% or more, go to the max frequency. And um, uh, note that after we switch uh, the frequency, our utilization does not change, because this is a, uh, this is a frequency invariant utilization. The, it's, it, it, it has been multiplied by that scaling, scaling factor, and uh, it doesn't, it's not affected by uh, changes in frequency. Then let's look at the non-frequency invariant case, which looks so symmetrical somehow to the other formula. Why it ends up being like that? Uh, well, the, the, the way you derive this formula from the other one is you do, you do this substitution, okay, where uh, here I add subscript to the utilization term to, identify, to tell if it's an invariant or not. So util invariant is just the utilization raw multiplied by our uh, scaling factor, current frequency divided max frequency. Very well. We plug this term into the formula, maximum frequency cancel out, and we got that current frequency uh, remains there. Fine. Um, note that in this case, the, the, one point, the, the term 1.25 has a different physical meaning. The, the meaning now is that if the utilization is, uh, is less than 0.8, uh, utilization by 1.25 is going to be less than 1. So the next frequency is lower than the current frequency. If the utilization is more than eight, uh, the 80%, the next we are going to rise the frequency. This is because by design, um, we, we want to keep our utilization always at 8%. Remember that in this case, the utilization is affected by the frequency. So we want to keep the utilization constantly at 80%, if it goes uh, above 80%, we uh, increase the frequency. Increasing the frequency makes the utilization goes down because we are running faster, our task uh, takes less time, so the utilization that we, we, we read is smaller. If the utilization is below 80%, we reduce the frequency and um, our task will look larger, so the utilization will increase. So the idea is to keep the utilization constantly at 80%. Uh, so this is, uh, we do this algebraic substitution, and that's why we come to this formula. But I don't think this provides a very good intuition of why things work like, like they do. So I propose um, this metaphor, uh, this analogy, if you want, to better understand the non-frequency invariant case. And this analogy goes like this. Sorry, another. So let think, let's imagine that we have a bucket of water. And uh, we call the, the full volume of this bucket, we call it F. And uh, the volume of the water inside this bucket, we call it W. In this case, the utilization of our bucket would be uh, volume of the water divided by volume of the bucket. Uh, what I'm asking here, I would like to find a different uh, bucket to pour my, the same water into this new bucket so that the new utilization is going to be 80%. And so this new bucket, I'm going to call it F prime, and uh, I would like my new utilization to be 0 0.8. How you do that? You set 0 0.8 in the relationship above, W divided by F prime, take F prime on the other side. And, uh, and then you, uh, you replace W with the relationship above. And what you get is very similar. It's actually exactly the same as the formula for switching uh, the frequency in the non-invariant case. Um, so this uh, provides us a bit of intuition on what the non-invariant case is doing. Imagine that switching the frequency is... Uh, uh, taking your water in a new bucket, and uh, what is the water, what is the, the, the full volume of the bucket in the, two, in the two cases. So we have our water bucket uh, analogy, water bucket universe, and there uh, F is the total volume of the bucket, but in the frequency switching thing, F is the frequency I'm, I'm running at the time right now. 
in the water bucket, W is the water, and in uh, frequent, uh, frequency switching, uh, W is something that I would like to call work, number of instruction I do per second. Uh, so uh, somehow you, so the, the, if you think about this water thing, the, and, and, and you remember that W is the, the work instruction per second you do, and the full volume of the bucket is um, the, uh, the current frequency I'm going, it's sort of like the current frequency is kind of an upper bound of, of, of how much work I can do. I cannot put more water than the, the, the bucket is big. So this sort of makes sense because the frequency is uh, cycle, clock cycles per second, and uh, the, I, cannot, I cannot go faster than, than my clock. This is just how time works in a CPU. You cannot do anything faster than, than one clock. I don't even think there is any in instruction that, that takes exactly one clock cycle. Maybe there is, I, I might be wrong, but this is clearly the limit that you can go. And so this sort of rings kind of true. This metaphor might be not too, not too uh, absurd. And another, um, another um, observation we can do is that our, our uh, utilization in the uh, water bucket is, is, uh, is dimensionless because it's uh, volume divided by volume. But if you take uh, what the frequency uh, is in, um, we know it's cycle per second, and then this uh, W term is instruction per second, uh, then the, the div division W divided by F, that would be uh, instruction per cycle, IPC. Which is, uh, we might not be too far from the truth. It's, it sort of makes sense to, to say that the utilization of instruction, instruction per cycle. Anyway, I think that this analogy uh, helps uh, me to understand a little better what is going on in the non-frequency invariant case. So let's look back at those two formulas. They looked so similar at the beginning. Now we can see the, the, the difference in them. Um, frequency max in the top, current frequency in the bottom. The bottom case is very similar to this water bucket thing. And also util. Util, those two numbers have the same name, but they're very different. Because in the top case, util doesn't change with frequency. It can be 7% forever if there are new, no new tasks or tasks that are killed in my machine. It's always the same number. But in the, in the bottom case, this number changes with frequency all the time. We desperately try to keep it 80% constant but uh, it, as we change the frequency, that changes, so we have to correct immediately for it. So util, same name, but very different uh, semantic, if you want, of this term. So uh, this was for the frequency invariant case. I hope we now understand a little better what does scale invariance mean. What we want to be invariant to the scale of our frequency, change frequency. We don't, all, don't want all the world change. Let's now talk about PELT, per entity load tracking. So uh, PELT is uh, a feature of the Linux scheduler invented in uh, 2012. As I said, uh, load and utilization are cost functions and uh, we are free to define them as we like. And in 2012, uh, Mr. Paul Turner, who wrote the PELT uh, implementation, decided that uh, Utilization um, load uh, uh, defined on the CPU basis was not enough. Uh, uh, so he wanted to have a task granularity so, so, and then aggregate this uh, number up to, to finally have a per CPU utilization, but uh, starting from the task granularity. Um, so uh, as I say, it's... Uh, I call it recursively defined, and uh, bear with me on what recursivity is in this case. What I mean is that there are, uh, imagine those, uh, this hierarchy where the leaf, uh, sort of a tree, and the leaf, le leaves of these three are the task, and then the tasks are aggregated into C groups, and then they are aggregated in run queues, there are, and finally in the, in the root run queues, one per CPU. So we have a mathematical definition for the leaves, uh, which is a formula that is still, after half an hour of talk, haven't presented you, but I will show you later to how to say which, what is the utilization of this task. And then we 
we sum it up over the, these hierarchies and compose what is the utilization of this C group, what is the utilization of this rank Q, what is the utilization of this CPU. So in this sense, I mean recursively defined. And um, uh, PELT, I, 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 I refer to PELT, PELT as a number. Actually, it's two numbers. One is load and one is utilization. Um, the, the, yeah, the, they are, they are load and utilization have a very similar uh, definition. They sort of shadow of each other, but uh, they are different in the sense that, uh, um, as I say, the utilization is based on the running time. Uh, it's a function of running time. There is some sophisticated mathematical formula that takes running time and makes some uh, formula out of it. And load is uh, is based not on the running time, but on the runnable time of a task. The runnable time, uh, I mean that you not only consider the time that the task is uh, spending on the CPU running instructions, but also the time that the task has been in the CPU run queue waiting to run. So a task can be, if a task exists, can be either sleeping, so nowhere to be seen, or decided that we want to schedule this task, but we, be, uh, between we decided to schedule it and the, the, the time we actually see it on the CPU, the, this task spends a little time waiting on the run queue to be, to be run. So uh, runnable means that it's in the run queue, but not necessarily running. So this is what the load uh, measure. And load is larger than utilization, because in the load, you also put this time that the task is waiting on a run queue. So this is what... Uh, is commonly called runnable, runnable time. Um, oh, this is the formula. So this is the formula that I didn't want to show you before because I thought this is a bit distracting. There are a lot of things going on with this formula and I prefer to, to, to say just the percentage of running time in the last millisecond. But this is the full thing. This is a full story. So, um, so uh, in, I, uh, in this, this form, it's a, it's, a, it's a ratio, as you can see. I, I, I say that this is equal to util. So now I'm talk, talking about utilization. But if you want to know about load, just take my, my speech and just uh, search and replace running time, runnable time. And this is what load and utilization are. Um, so uh, we have a numerator of this, um, of this ratio, a numerator goes uh, R0 plus R1Y uh, uh, plus R2Y squared, and so on. So uh, first, this Y number. Y is a constant. It's a number that is decided uh, by the, the inventor of this algorithm that said this number has to be 0 0.9785, et cetera, et cetera. Why this special number has been chosen? The property is that, I didn't write it there, uh, but the property of y is that y at the power of 32 needs to be uh, one half, needs to be 0 0.5. This is why the reason, uh, and um, I don't want to get into the, the reason why, uh, why it's there, just say it uh, without explanation. The reason is that, so this is a geometric series, and y is a coefficient, it's sort of a weight, and this weight gets uh, smaller and smaller, the higher is the exponent that you place there. And uh, so if you have uh, uh, the, 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 the weight y, and then you have a lot uh, down the line y at the power of 32, uh, so this weight is half the weight is what's here. So this is sort of the, the how much, what is the, the memory span of this uh, geometric series, uh, 32 iterations. So this is why they want it. And 32 happens to be one millisecond. But just saying this information uh, without explanation, because it's really distracting, I think. So we have this number, y, decided because they were very smart, and they put y as it is. Then r0, r1, r2. So those are running times. Uh, plural, several running times. Why plural? Because we are uh, partitioning uh, the, 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 the line of time into segments. Those segments are each one is uh, 1,024 uh, microseconds, so about one millisecond uh, each. Uh, micro, yes, microsecond, yes. And, uh, and this uh, the partitioning starts with um, where the, the task is born. 
So task is born, we start counting these segments, okay? And uh, the, 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 the segment I am in right now at the time, the present time, is numbered as zero. This is the segment number zero, the most recent segment. And then the previous segment is one, the pre uh, two before uh, the current segment is two, and so on. And um, so the utilization is, uh, the, the most uh, important term, the term that has not been decayed at all, is the running time during the segment zero, R0. R0, running time in the segment zero. Then you have running time in the segment one, which is a bit uh, back in time. We decay, we multiply by uh, numbers more than one, which is Y. And then the, the R2, which is two seconds before the one, this is decayed even more because the Y is at uh, the second power and so on. So the, the running time in this segment is the most important one. The, the, as the past, as the time evolves, the, this, the running time are less and less important, but we still don't want to forget it, okay? And then in the denominator of, uh, of the series, it's the same as the numerator, but every R term is replaced by 1,024, um, which is the maximum value an R term can have because the segment is exactly 1,024 mic uh, microsecond. So the max R you can be, the max running time you can get in, a, in a 1,024 microsecond is 1,024 microsecond. You were always running, okay? So the denumerator is a normalizing factor to say what would be if you were always running, okay? So this is the utilization term. And uh, it's dimensionless, it's between zero and one, all the ca characteristics we want. But um, uh, this is how utilization is defined. Um, so this is uh, per entity load tracking, has this uh, recursive definition. The leaves uh, n n term, which are the task, have an utilization per task. Uh, I knew it was happening. I'm sorry, this is uh, bad. <laughs> um, I hope it's coming back because I'm, yes, yes, it's back. Yes, so, uh, so this is what I wanted to say about this slide, the formula. Uh, is that. Uh, now this is a little experiment that you can uh, do at home if you like, and uh, it's, uh, it's a CPU intensive task that you run on your machine just to see what the load and utilization are for this task, okay? So this is a bash script, and uh, I, I, I run a loop, 10 iteration, but every iteration is then uh, launched in background. So this is actually running 10 different uh, tasks, 10 different processes. Because for every iteration, you have an ampersand after the done. So, boom, it goes in background. And what I do is I just do a summation in every, every one of these processes, just they're spinning, spinning the CPU. What I do, I, I use a task set to uh, bind all of those 10 processes to the same CPU. Dash, dash CPU list zero. So they all stay on CPU number zero. I have four CPUs here, but they all stay on the zeros, zeroth one. Heavy SH is the name of the script. And then I do echo T into the sysrq trigger. The T, the T command uh, does uh, the function which is called task dump. Sysrq is a magical debugging interface. And you, you do this, uh, you have a task dump, so lots of information. We're going to see a snippet of it later. Uh, task dump, and you will see this stuff into the system uh, log in the message, okay? So you do this, then you kill all these processes because you have saved the information you wanted in, in, the, in the message. And this is a snippet of the D message I wanted to show you. Uh, we have util AVG and load AVG for the CPU number zero. What do we see here? Util AVG is 1,023. Uh, load AVG is 10 times as much. So first, uh, I, I promised you that util was going to be between zero and one. Why is that 1,023? The reason is that in the kernel you do a fixed point arithmetic, you cannot do a floating point arithmetic. So if you want a, a, a decimal digit, you have to multiply everything by the number of digits you want, by the 1,000 if you want three digits. So uh, 1,000 uh, would be one, morally. Actually, 1,024, because power of two, you know. But uh, uh, util AVG is bound to be um, smaller than 1,024, which means smaller than one, just because we have this scaling in order to do integer arithmetic and, and simulate uh, uh, decimal place. Then there is a load, uh, which is 10 times as much. Um, why is util 
When I was seeing this, we, we have discussed uh, for 40 minutes now that uh, util has to be smaller than one, so we are not uh, surprised that util is smaller than one. But when I saw those two numbers, I said, wait a minute. Uh, util and load are both summations when you go to the, to the, to the root run queue, and um, they are summation over basically all the tasks that they were running on those CPUs. So I have my complicated formula for each one of those tasks. Those formulas, those formulas on the leaves node are uh, uh, smaller than one as a result, but then you sum it all up and then compute the root run Q value. So how come the util is bound to be smaller than 1024, smaller than one, even if I'm summing all this stuff inside it, you know? So the reason is, uh, the reason is, is that in the next slide? Yes. The reason is that there can only be one task on the CPU at, the, at a given point in time. So util is, um, it cannot exceed the number one even when you sum all of the tasks because uh, this is a, this are a different task, zero, one, two, and three. If you take a, a vertical line in every time in, uh, in this diagram, you will only see one of the tasks that was running because you, the CPU has only space for one. So all of these tasks take turns into, into uh, incrementing the big formula, the big uh, summation that you have on the root. Uh, but uh, only one of them can contribute non-zero term at a given point in time. As you see, only one of them can be green if I do if I trace a vertical line in time, because there is only one place in the CPU. Other pe uh, the tasks have to take turns into running on that CPU. So at any given point in time, there is only one of those tasks which are accumulating value for the root value of the utilization. And, uh, um, and they, so the, the global formula mm, uh, increase just the right amount so that when I sum it all, it makes one. And this was because I was uh, saturating the CPU with tasks. And for the load, on the other side, you uh, also count the uh, runnable time. So you, you basically unbound in the value that you can have at the root. Uh, the, only, um, the only bound you, you have on the load is uh, the number of uh, PID or process ID you can have in your system. But as long as you can span uh, more, uh, more processes, they will increase the load of the machine because we are counting the runnable time, also the time that they were spent waiting, okay? So this is why util, even at the root level, is bound by one, why the load is basically unbound. And you saw that if we remember that everything is uh, multiplied by 1,000 just to get more significant digit, util was one, while the load was 10 because we had 10 processes waiting, is, is my loop that I showed before. So uh, this, um, before we have, uh, we have seen so far uh, the, the load and utilization value for the CPU, for the load, uh, for the root uh, run queue of the CPU, so after all the summation has been done, but you can also interrogate your system for the load and utilization of a specific process. They are defined per task, so let's see what they are on a given task. And how we do that, we use the proc file system, proc slash PID slash, there's a file called SCAD, and in this file, you can find uh, this information, and uh, there, for instance, this was my bash, uh, um, my bash console, and uh, SE stands for scheduler entity because it's the name in the kernel this thing has. Everything that can schedule is the scheduler entity. Dot .avg, it's a struct that contains those two values, load and utilization. Uh, dot .util avg, util avg was zero because my bash was very quiet, it was doing nothing. And the load was zero as well. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, utilization estimation. Um, Yes, just I have just introduced this for two minutes uh, because we are uh, five minutes from the end, and I would uh, give the opportunity to get I don't know some questions. So um, the utilization estimation thing is um, the only thing I'm going to say about this is that it's an optimization on Pelt, and uh, what is the the thing to optimize? You uh, when you have um, uh, when you have a, a task that it's uh, um, 
it's on the it's on the CPU. It's uh, uh, increasing its running time because it's running. Uh, you are increasing the utilization. But as soon as this task is put to sleep, is dequeued from the run queue of the CPU, it starts decaying because uh, let me let me go back to to, uh, to the formula of Pelt. You can see that this are uh, as if I am on the CPU at uh, time zero. R0 is uh, non-zero and it's increasing the formula. But as the time passes and this guy has been dequeued and is been put to sleep, the non-zero term get uh, risk uh, get moved uh, on the on the right and they are multiplied by the never in, uh, decreasing weight and uh, and nothing is coming from the new running time because the task is at sleep. So basically, the utilization function, as soon as you are being put to sleep, uh, decreases in value quite fast. And um, so uh, this is uh, so. If you put the, the the task back on the CPU, you will have a utilization that has suffered from this decrease, and you are. It's going to take some time to come back at the value you desire. So utilast is just a mechanism to store the utilization value you had before you were dequeued. And when you are uh, enqueued again, the schedule chill, our frequency governor that decides which frequency is appropriate for a given CPU, will take the maximum between this utilization estimation, which is just taking what was uh, before you were dequeued, and the utilization you have now. The, the intuition is that as the time passes, the, at, at the very beginning, when you are re-enqueued, the utilization estimation is the term that is uh, the big one. So that's going to be the max. But as time uh, uh, passes, you are uh, going to regain again your utilization because you are on the CPU. And the second term, UtilAVG, is going to take the lead and then give you the, the final uh, can give you the result that's consumed by schedule chill. I am going to ask if there is any question right now. So probably put the thank you slides because we have like three minutes and then we want to go to lunch, I guess. So any comments? Take this for a no. And OK, uh, let me see if I have any. Like the extras were a bit heavy, but I was really, I was really at the end of it. So let just me. Uh, we have one minute. I'll just read the the things here just to recap what we did. So number one, Pelt. Uh, it was invented in 2012. It was an innovation in uh, this cost function, uh, uh, how to measure this, the utilization and the load. So uh, the innovation was we measure it per task and then aggregate it up to compose the per CPU. Measure instead of just going directly at the CPU level and ignoring all this precious information down there. Schedule Chill 2016 uses this data to drive frequency choices. So very good. Uh, Utilast was to correct this fault into how um, slow it was held to uh, utilization value to gain back uh, steam after uh, a, a restart of a process. And, uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, the, the probably take on message is uh, that Schedule Teal is something that uh, it's a new, let's say, player in this domain of uh, switching the, uh, the CPU frequency. And it's a shift between, it, it claims a position of uh, vantage for the operating system with respect to the hardware, because uh, uh, in the Intel world, uh, the hardware is getting uh, more and more logic built in into the CPU so that the CPU can decide autonomously which is the next fre frequency to run. Because they say we have more precise data, we don't want to have all the lag into sending this data up to the operating system. We just have all the information we need. We know the utilization from the hardware. And for, uh, in the hardware, we put a microcontroller that uh, do all this power management optimization. But the, the schedule chill uh, uh, mechanisms say, wait a minute, you don't have the scheduler knowledge into the CPU. You don't know about the run queues. You don't know about tasks that are migrating back and forth from the CPUs. You have to uh, react 
instead of acting uh, proactively in uh, respect to these changes. So the Schedule Till thing is an interesting development because it uh, put two, com two competing, uh, uh, but also they can collaborate to, uh, to, me to, to strategies uh, and uh, shows that the operating system has something to say in this uh, respect. Uh, not only the hardware has this privilege of having fast and accurate measurement, but the operating system has knowledge of scheduler decision because it's the operating system who makes those decisions. So this is the content of the presentation. I thank you very much for your attention, your time, and I wish you a good lunch. <laughs>